Okay. What's up, everybody? Good morning. Welcome to a Sunday edition of Morning Scone presented by Brock, the Badger of the Clinic. Hudco Roofing. HudcoRoofing.com. Uh, Restored Motion. RestoredMotions.com and ProchargeEV, ProchargeEV.com. Hope y'all are having a great start to your Sunday. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful Sunday morning after a gorgeous Saturday. God, yesterday was so perfect, y'all. Weather was great. Uh, vibes are immaculate. LSU blows the doors off of Auburn, 48 to 18. I love it, 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 love it. Um, I thought we were destined to see another a uh, four-quarter game, another nail-biter, uh, just the nature of how this season has gone with the with um, with LSU because of the way the defense has played. But offense continued to roll the way that it has the bulk of the season, really all of the season. And uh, the defense found its footing early and often in that game, uh, save really one drive uh, in the first half where Auburn kind of went right down the field on it. Um, and then... Um, you know, they, they put together an, a field goal drive to start the third quarter and another touchdown drive really to, to end, the, the, end the third, start the fourth. But, man, LSU gives up 18 points. They'll beat everybody they play. So, um, what a fun fun game to watch. A, a great night at Don Juan. Thanks to everybody who came out. Man, we had a great crowd last night. Um, I mean, I met a father-son uh, from, um, I came in from Puerto Rico, um, met some folks, came in from Monroe, uh, uh, another guy who is from Baton Rouge, lives in Lake Charles now, is working in Houston, came over. So, man, just everybody keeps coming just to hang out with us at Don Juan and we're, it's, it's great. So we just appreciate everybody who, uh, who keeps coming out and, Anyway, Tigers win. Um, another great night for Jaden Daniels, who I know everyone's going to keep asking about his Heisman possibilities. I'm going to keep saying it. Um, but Caleb Williams probably eliminated from the Heisman last night. Uh, a three-interception game on the road to Notre Dame. I uh, don't think that that team is done losing either. And, <clears throat> you know, to win it back-to-back -back years, you have to best the year you had prior, and I, that's just not going to happen. Uh, Bo Nix played well yesterday, but Oregon lost. So, you know, his odds are going to, are going to be dinged. So Michael Penix is going to have a firm grasp on, on the, you know, being the Heisman front runner now, but that's far from over. Um, so if Jaden just keeps trucking the way he is, I mean, last night, 20 to 27, 325, three touchdowns and one pick, the pick was a deflected ball that went up in the air. And then running 11 carries for 93 yards. I mean, you know, he's, uh, you're running out of superlatives. Uh, he's already at 2,294 yards, right? So he's at just under 2,300 yards passing on the season. Um, you know, his uh, rushing stats for the year, he's, um, uh, he's at 500 yards through seven games. So you know, he's gonna he's gonna approach a uh, thousand for the season. You know he had eight eighty five last year. He he should surpass that. So man, and I remember that eight eighty five was in fourteen games as well. So I'm saying he he could surpass eight eighty five in the regular season. So I mean he's basically three hundred and seventy yards away from that. Uh, with with five regular season games to play, so all right, um, we'll say some good mornings. Let me know what y'all got. Uh, you know, we'll do the thing. A little uh, Phil Steele, by the way, another great day yesterday. Um, uh, Phil's picks went six, three, and one yesterday, and I'll tell you candidly, I did not, I think I gave this one out, I did not play, one of his picks was A&M, and I did not play that, because I, I like Tennessee in that game, so I just abstained. So I went 6-2-1 and one yesterday against the spread, uh, but if you played them all and you went 6-3-1 and one with Phil's picks from AFR, you're still winning money. Um, 
Jimmy Odds Football Sunday is coming up, um, and he'll have all of his handicappers given bets. I'll tell you if you're interested, both uh, because he on Jimmy's Sports Betters Paradise podcast, some some of the picks they give live on the show today. Some of the picks are recorded from earlier in the week, and I'll tell you one of the picks that both Randy McKay, who's the best, is the best handicapper that Jimmy has on. Um, Randy McKay and Brady Cannon both gave was uh, was Indy. Hey. hey, I I think it was shut maybe from last night. So Indy um, plus four um, is uh, is one that I'm I'm heavy on today. If you're looking for an early early pick, okay. Um, let's say some good mornings. Y'all fire away. Ryan Amanda Gidry, good morning. Jamie Lede, Chad Brown, Rick Manuel, good morning. Vernell Thomas, what's up? Uh, would love for us to run the ball 80% of the time today. Yeah, play a little keep away. You know, I'll tell you the thing with the Saints today that I'm a little um, nervous about there, Vernell, is, you know, I, I, y'all know how I feel. I'm, I'm not high on the Saints offense, and nor, we, we shouldn't be high on the Saints offense because they're not very good. And I know they scored 34 last week, but half of that, 17 points came off of turnovers. Um, you... Uh, You've had success against some of the worst offenses in the NFL, the Titans, the Panthers, the Packers, the Patriots, and you gave up 26 at home to the Bucks, who aren't the worst offense in the NFL, but are far from the best. Now you face the Texans, who are going to be by far the best offense you face this year, the third in the NFL in passing. So this will be somewhat telling for this for this defense. Scott Bork, good morning. Uh, Ryan Amanda Gidry said, great to see Kyron Lacey have a great game. Yeah, <clears throat> how about the big play? threat Kyron Lacey can be. Uh, he led you with a hundred and I gotta keep the box score up, sorry. Kyron Lacey led you with a hundred four receptions for a hundred and eleven yards. Four for one eleven. Uh, Jason Horn, Bubba Smith, good morning. David Ray Trey Fisher, what up, Fish? Good morning. Uh, uh, Fish, Erica said hi. Heath Lanier, Kelly Gross, John Hendricks. What's up, John? Got to see John Hendricks last night. Appreciate you coming out. Uh, Jerry DeLucky, hated missing last night. Hoping to get out for the next Whiskey and Wine. I think USC was finally exposed. Well, you know, Jerry, uh, and we always miss you, man. We're glad whenever you can make it out. You know, I think, um, I think... USC, maybe this is just semantics, Jerry. I think USC had been exposed. Like we knew what their deal. Like I, one of my biggest plays yesterday was was on Notre Dame to cover the two and a half. And I think I said on Friday that I thought Audrey Gestime would run, would run for three thousand yards against USC because their defense is terrible. And going on the road, it was supposed to be cold and rainy. Um, Notre Dame's physical running attack, uh, I thought, would just overwhelm SC. Um, so that's not, that, that result was maybe the least surprising of the day to me, um, to see SC get beaten the way that, that they did 48 to 20. I mean, their defense is terrible and Notre Dame, Sam Hartman's a good offense and Audrey, Audrey Estime, Estime ran 22 times for 95 yards. Um, and then, uh, Hartman was 13 to 20 for 126. So yeah, Caleb Williams, 199 yards, a touchdown and three picks. All right, Tim Gotro, good morning. I was surprised to see a couple of cameos from Iraq last night. Yeah. Uh, Iraq was there last night. She, she kept popping and waving at the camera. Uh, totally fangirl in there. Um, Joseph Baggard, good morning. It's rare that I get to join live. What a nice win last night. Good to have you here, Joseph. Thanks for being there, man. Alex Katsanos. Give the O line the game ball. Yeah, that's something we got to talk about for sure. Emory Jones uh, left in a boot. Um, he was injured on LSU's second possession. Um, I was told ankle. Um, we'll wait to see prognosis and all that sort of stuff, but most definitely won't play this week against uh, Army, and then you get your open date before Bama. So the hope is, right? If it's if the prognosis is good, he gets to rest and get treatment here for the next um, the next two weeks and. Uh, you know, potentially would be, I guess really it could be three weeks, right? Because you get all of this week, 
all of next week when you're open and then the week of, of the Bama game. So three weeks game to game. So we'll see if that's enough to get him ready to play. But if not, the good news is Lance Hurd played essentially the whole game because he went in on the second possession. And then he'll get the whole game against Army. So, um, you know, good experience for, for Hurd uh, before you have to go to Tuscaloosa. So, um, Nick Newbill, Brett DeGroo, Joseph Feltwell, good morning. Can we do it today? Who that? Sure, can. Um, now, I'll tell you what, I just told you about the picks on Jimmy Out's Football Sunday. One of the ones that Brady Cannon gave um, in his, uh, his best plays of the day are the Houston Texans. And I did pick the Texans on, on Friday on AFR. Um, for the reasons I just said, um, I am not, I do not buy the Saints offense after this past weekend. Uh, you're going against a good Texans de defense. Tamiko Ryan, you know, was the DC there in, in San Francisco with those great defenses. And he's building this Texans defense in that mold. Um, no Derek Stingley. Uh, they did sign uh, J uh, Jason Verrett. A former first-round pick out of TCU, if you remember. LSU played against Verrett and TCU back in 2013 in that opener. But um, they did sign Verrett this week, who uh, who Ryan's had with him in San Francisco. So he may play today. But, um, no, I, I, think, uh, I think the wrong team's favored. Saints are favored by a point and a half. I think the wrong team's favored. I, think, I do think the Texans win today. I agree with, uh, with Brady. Cody Champion, good morning, Matt. What an absolute behind whipping. Damon Hinderberger, Cortland Jacob, Sways, Nola Way, what up? Truax, what's good? Larry Garner, Chet Buxton, maybe Shand out of nowhere has a game. See, I'm not going to say that that's out of nowhere. Uh, Paris Shand has, has had a good season. Uh, he finished with six tackles, uh, one and a half TFLs and a pass defended. Um, that pass breakup, I think, came at the end of the first half. Yeah, it was. So, um, w um, after Jaden's interception, right before the end of the first half, Auburn got the ball. And so, again, it's 20 to 7. That was the only, it's the only time in the game where I got a little nervous. Uh, it's 20 to 7. They're getting the ball to start the second half. So, instead of Instead of scoring before the end of the half, where LSU's been so good, you you throw this tip ball interception, and now it's like, oh man, if they go get points here, they're getting the ball to start the second half. All of a sudden, you could be in a in a one score game. You could be in a in a situation where you are a, a tipped interception, a strip sack, scoop and score one weird play away. What, basically, what LSU did to Auburn last year when Baskerville had the the scoop and score, um, but. They're moving down the field, and you know, they get to midfield. And then on second down, Paris Shand uh, bats the ball down. So they got third and 10, and then Makai Wingo came up with a sack, and it got you off the field. So um, that was really the only time where I was like, little, you know. Nervous. But Shand has been really good this year. Um, he's played both the, the left end spot, backing up uh, Savion Jones. And they've also, when they go into dime, uh, so, like, when they're going in obvious passing downs, they'll go to dime, and they'll move Shand inside. And so they'll have Savion Jones and Paris Shand and Braden Swenson and usually Mason Smith or, or Wingo rushing from the in inside. And then Ryan Yates will go in as a dime back. So whenever they want, like, speed and, and more rushers on the field, Shand goes in there. Shand's had a nice season. Um, I, I understand that it's, it's more rotational and situational, but he has had a nice year. Uh, so I wouldn't call that that out of nowhere. Uh, Baby Bobby, good morning. Devin Kelly, Matty boy, you said you hope we get to come out and say, hey, they won 49-17. You almost called it by accident. Well, I think, I, Devin, I was thinking about that last night, man, because somebody did, um, So I think someone picked something like that on the show yesterday here. I think they said, you know, LSU 42 to 20 or something. Like someone on the show said that. And so I was like, Man, I, I hope LSU wins like 49 to 17 and, you know, just, it's a total breather. And, and look, I'm, I, I am so glad to have been wrong about how that game was going to play out. Um, I'm not in any way surprised that LSU put up, you know, 48. I am surprised they held Auburn to 18. And I understand Auburn's issues. Auburn's been bad, but so has the LSU defense. So when it's bad on bad, 
something's got to give there, right? Some Somebody's got to play better. Uh, and it was LSU's defense. Austin Kidder, good morning. Great game, great post-game show. You're like T-Bob's older, wiser big brother who needs to constantly save him from himself. That's a good way to put it. <laughs> that is a good way to put it. Uh, for anybody who did not watch Whiskey and Wine, if you literally go to the very end, like literally the last minute of the show, uh, when we start to preview Army, um, T-Bob had an all-timer. No. Uh, Brian Wynn, good morning. Matt Lusto. Uh, we'll be wearing my jersey around Houston today. Who dat? All right, Matt. Uh, Brad David, good morning. Your post game is so funny. You and T-Bop are different, which makes it work. It's it's the it's definitely the odd couple vibe that makes it work for sure. Jacob Thompson, good morning. Do you think the triple option will be a problem for the defense? So keep in mind, Jacob. And we'll be talking about that this week. Army doesn't run the triple option anymore. It blows people's mind, but they run a different version of it because the NCAA changed the rules where you where linemen can't cut block anymore. Not chop block, cut block. And a cut block is where you used to be allowed to, to block below the waist at you know, at the line of scrimmage. A chop block is when if a defender is engaged high with an offensive player and another offensive player goes low on the player while they're engaged, that's a chop block. That's still a, that's a penalty. But what you used to be able to do was cut block. Like, and this is very, I mean, we used to be taught this. I mean, shoot, I was a six foot, 230 pound offensive lineman. And a, a cut block is basically just as someone's coming at you, you just, you go low, you submarine them and it, you, you get their hands down, you chop them. I mean, it's, and totally legal uh, at the line of scrimmage. But the NCA uh, disallowed that. And so, you know, Monk and the Army coach was basically like, well, that's a key part of what we do. If we can't do that, then, uh, you know, we got to switch. So they run a more traditional style offense now at Army. It's not the straight triple option anymore. Uh, Brian, we have Matt. Why do you think Tiger Stadium empties out starting in the third quarter and was just about empty by the time the game ended last night? Well, it was a blowout. Uh, it, it wasn't empty when LSU was playing Arkansas in a game that went down to the wire. Uh, so that's part of it. And uh, the other big part of it is traffic, because if you don't, you'll be stuck in traffic for two, three hours. So, Lars Corville, good morning. Randall Uffrecht, good morning. Does LSU play Texas or Oklahoma next season? Oklahoma in Baton Rouge. Spurge, good morning. Jay Turner, Matt, I never understood why you were so scared about this game. Auburn was completely unmatched. Most people knew this was going to be a blow. Uh, yeah, Jay Turner, have you watched LSU at all this year? Um, I mean, I watched LSU's defense giving up 32 a game. Uh, that would be my counter. It's bad on bad. I mean, you say Auburn's been completely unmatched. Well, Auburn also scored... That bad Auburn offense scored 59 against UMass and 45 against Samford. And you're going to say, well, that's UMass and Samford. Right. And LSU's defense is poo. Has been up to this point. Like, it was a completely logical concern because LSU's defense has been... It's not like I was the only one talking about defense this week. Um... Let's see, I watched ESPN's college wrap-up. They didn't have Daniels in the top five for the Heisman. It'll come. It'll come. Uh, I mean, look, if you let's look at some updated Heisman odds. Um, so so Jaden is up to fifth now with the fifth best odds. Michael Penix is minus 140. Who he's he's minus. Uh, J.J. McCarthy from Michigan, who's not going to win it. Dylan Gabriel from Oklahoma. Jordan Travis. And then Jay Downs. And they're all close. Like, Penix is minus 140. Then McCarthy and Gabriel are plus 1,000. Jordan Travis is plus 1,200. And Jay Downs plus 1,400. So he's, like, he's right there. Um, and that's that's in the, the betting odds. Like, I, I would put far more stock into the 
into the betting odds than I would what co uh, an analyst on the college football you know, wrap-up show says. So, anyway. Um, NVC, good morning. You have any betting locks today? Um, I'll t I mentioned it a bit ago, but um, well, hang on one second. Just give me one second, y'all. One second, one second. I wrote down a few. So, I know I've explained before. Jimmy does sports. Uh, Jimmy does his Jimmy Yachts Football Sunday, and they give away their best bets. And it's like five handicappers, and some of it's live. Like Jimmy's going to give away his picks live. Paul Nolan will give his two picks live. Andy Isco will give his two picks live. Um, but the other contributors are Randy McKay and Brady Cannon, and Jimmy pulls those from his podcast, which is Sports Better's Paradise. Randy McKay, who is I think pretty roundly considered the best sports handicapper. Like last week when everybody lost, Randy was two and one. Like he always wins. Uh, Randy had Colts plus 14, Giants, which is, it was plus 14, which is actually now plus 15. And he had the under in Giants Bills. Those are Randy's three picks. Colts, Giants, and Giants Bills under. Brady Cannon also had Colts. So when you see agreement, um, when sharps are all picking the same game, that's when a big light bulb goes off in my head. Like, ding, go heavier on it. Because if all I want to be where the I want to be opposite the public and I want to be with the sharps. So Brady Cannon had Colts, Lions minus three, and uh, he had a teaser with the Texans and the Chargers. So those were uh, those were Brady's plays. So those are the six plays so far. And then um, if you're listening to Jimmy's show, you'll get two from Andy Isco, two from Paul Nolan, and then five from Jimmy. So you get nine more picks. Um, and I, I always look for agreement where if there's a game that all of them are picking, then I go heavy on that. So like I went, I made, because both Randy and Brady both played the Colts. Um, and think they're, look, they're playing in Jacksonville, uh, Jacksonville, two weeks in London coming home. Jacksonville's actually played better in London than they do in Jacksonville. Uh, the Colts might actually be a better team right now with Garner Minshew at quarterback. So Colts getting four. Both of them said they think the Colts win the game outright. So um, anyway, Brad David, did you see the SNL skit about Deion Sanders? I did not. Matt B. LSU football five to win. Ben Thompson. Uh, Penix only has four more passing yards than Jaden. Jaden has four rushing touchdowns. Penix has nothing, and Penix is also undefeated and on a top ten team. So that matters. Dane Bergeron, good morning. What happened on Whiskey and Wine last night? The show was not on air until the end. The show was not on air until the end. What do you mean, Dane? Um, I, Dane, I don't know what you're talking about, man. We were we were streaming the whole time. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure what happened, but it's it's up there, man. Um. Alex said, I love his progressions now, throwing guys open. Never thought I'd see it. It's the O-line. Alex, that's something I've been saying for a year now, man, is for all the criticism about Jaden Daniels not, you know, or running too soon or whatever, if you actually, I would challenge anybody this. If you're really, really interested, go back and watch any of the games in the, any of the first half of last season. Go back and watch uh, the Florida State game. Go go back and watch last year's Florida State game. You don't even have to watch the whole thing. Just go back and watch some of the Florida State game from last year. And and having seen this offense now, contrast it to what they were a year ago, and you'll go, okay, I get it. Um, the offensive line was atrocious. Remember, they started Garrett Dellinger at center in the opener last year against Florida State. Um. I've said this, and it doesn't resonate with people, but they used six different offensive line combinations in the first eight games last year. The line was atrocious, and Josh Williams was your best running back. And no disrespect to Josh Williams. Again, I think he's a very good college football player, and he's proven me wrong. Um, because I remember early in his career, there was a game of whiskey and wine where they, they threw him a pass near the goal line, and I couldn't understand why that was the player that they were targeting near the goal line. But listen, Josh Williams is going to have a great career as a team guy, and that's awesome. Um, but we can all agree 
Logan Diggs is different than Josh Williams. There's a reason Logan Diggs is RB1. He's an NFL running back. Look how different it is when you have that guy you could turn around and hand the ball to. I mean, there was a play yesterday, T-Bob mentioned it on Whiskey and Wine, where Logan Diggs is dead to rights in the backfield. He has a he does this jump cut just to get back to the line of scrimmage. It's like instead of second and 13, now it's second and 10. You know, it's instead of being behind the sticks, it's basically just the same as an incomplete pass, you know? So anyway. And by the way, on that next, I'm looking at it right here. And on that next play, it was second and 10, and Jaden Daniels ran for 13 yards and got your first down. So anyway. Um, Jackson Carney, offensive line, not giving enough credit. They were outstanding last night. Yo, shout out to Brock, the Baton Rouge Orthopedic Clinic. Of course, if you need an orthopedist, go to Brock. Uh, the After Hours Clinic is always open uh, nights and weekends. If you need an orthopedist, go to Brock. If you need a roof, give us a shout. Hudco Roofing, hudcoroofing.com. Tell you every day, do business with someone you know, Hudco Roofing and hudcoroofing.com. Um, do business with someone you know, I knew that was going to happen. There it is. Um, commercial or residential roof repairs, roof replacements. Hudco Roofing, HudcoRoofing.com. Anywhere in the state of Louisiana, commercial or residential, we'd love to give you help. Hudco Roofing, HudcoRoofing.com. All right, Vernell. Jaden has been absolutely smells like a New Orleans Saints quarterback. I think New Orleans needs to did it for Ricky Williams to trade our picks for draft rights. No. <laughs> Vernell, we're not. There's a reason. There's a reason no team has ever done that again and should never do that. You're not trading an entire draft. Mike Dick just wanted to go play golf. We're not doing that, though. But you may have an opportunity to draft, Jaden. Austin Kidder, mad at this team, keeps improving and wins out. It will be a darn shame if they don't get to play for a national championship. So, Austin, if LSU wins out, they will be in the playoff. If LSU goes 10-2, and beats Alabama goes to Atlanta, beats number one undefeated Georgia with a 30-game winning streak in the SEC championship game, LSU will be in the playoff. Just like last year. We are having the same conversation a year ago. Uh, there aren't going to be undefeated conference champions, and LSU and the SEC champion is going to get the benefit of the doubt. Because you're going to look back and you're going to say, oh, look, they played top five Florida State. Um and the loss was a close road loss to Ole Miss, is how you'd, you'd phrase it. So, um, anyway. It, I'm with you, and you're right. It's why I look for, like, think of it that way. Think, that's, that's a good way to put it, too. Because the example I use forever, I have used forever, is 2001. Like, LSU in 2001 at the start of the season was not great. And they lost three conference games. Uh, they blew up home lead against Eli Manning and Ole Miss and got you know blown out by Florida and lost a game at Tennessee where, man, they, they were right there. And, and Kelly Washington had a big day. But anyway, by the time you got to November, nobody wanted to play LSU. That offense with Davey and Josh Reed and LeBrandon Tofield and Michael Clay, like, they were humming, man. And they were awesome by the end of the season. And I'm not telling you they would have beaten that 0-1 Miami team, but... I think they could have challenged or beaten anybody else in the country. And but and they were the SEC champion. But because all you were in the BCS era, they had no chance to even play for it. So yes, I'm I'm fired up about an expanded playoff because you should be allowed to improve as the season goes along. And you shouldn't be penalized because you lost early. So yes, I'm excited about it. I'm excited about next year with an expanded playoff, absolutely. Lars Corville, where was this offense week one? The loss should definitely be hurting Jay Daniels. Um, Lars, they put up 200 yards in the first half against Florida State. They had two goal-to-go possessions and came away with no points because they kept going forward on fourth down and not converting. Um, the offense was there. 
week one against Florida State. Uh, they, you forget Florida State scored on seven consecutive possessions in that game because uh, the defense couldn't get off the field. Uh, Christian, morning, Matt. I woke up yesterday, texted my friend, got a good feeling about today, about the defense. Not saying they'll hold Auburn to 17, but for some reason I think they'll have a good night. Uh, Kobe and Dylan Podcast, how many seniors does LSU have? Um, let me look at the roster real quick. But remember, it's not just seniors, it's, um, it's more like draft eligible players, right? So like, like Malik is a junior. He's obviously not going to be, going to be back, right? Um, so John Emery... Jay Bramblett, Charles Turner, all fifth-year seniors. Um, the real question is where are your draft eligible guys? Uh, here's your seniors. Omar Spades, Kyron Lacey, Ovia Gofu, Jaden Daniels, Andre Sam, Noah Kane, Marlon Martinez, Gregory Clayton, Jordan Jefferson. Those are your seniors. Chad Brown. Uh, Scott has some things for Drew from yesterday's event. Okay, cool. Thank you, Chad. Todd Harris. Good morning, Matt. Nice to watch LSU play and not be stressed from start to finish. Uh, Bruce Parker. The DBs turned it around and turned around to find the ball last night. Michael Cook. Jason Lostness. Good morning. Oh, man, I lost my... I lost my spot. There we go. Heath Lanier, Matt, I know it's early. Do you see LSU's often scoring on Bama in three weeks like they have so far? Yes. Uh, Chris Anthony, morning, Matt. I can't remember, but is Kelly undefeated at LSU at night? Do you mean in home games? Let's see. Uh, well, yeah. There, I mean, there are only two losses. I mean, the, the A&M game last year was a night game, which, but that was on the road. And then uh, the Ole Miss game was a night game, but also on the road. Florida State was a night game both times. So, yes, I mean, they've lost at night, but not at home. Jerry, um, if not for a better NIL deal, do you think Coy, Coy Moore regrets his decision to transfer? No, and Coy Moore didn't leave for a better NIL deal. Coy Moore left because he was buried on the receiver depth chart. I mean, I mean, look at the guys you had here in that receiver class that had come in with Coy. I mean, Coy Moore came in that class with Neighbors and Brian Thomas and Chris Hilton and um, Deion Smith out of Mississippi. I mean, it was just a you were, you know, and you, you, are, you saw Kayshawn here. He was just he was just buried in a deep in a deep receiver room. Uh, Craig Duga, Jason Horn, Matt, it's been a while since I heard the Matt Shuffle. Uh, got it there, bro. I didn't even see that yet, but uh, that comment, which I see was like 20 minutes ago, my bad. We got it for you. Uh, Craig Duga, did you know one year ago, Jaden Daniels threw three touchdowns, rushed for three more, all the while people were still screaming to put us in? Yes, Craig, I'm aware. Uh, no one is screaming for us anymore. Daryl Fontenot, really was nervous about facing Hugh Freeze after a bye week. Me too. Jason Horn, T-Bob tried to walk it back, but there was no coming back from that. I think you made T-Bob's dad when you started talk day when you started talking about Star Wars. <laughs> John DeRose, seven on seven is ruined football. Changed my mind. I don't have to change your mind. Uh, you still watch football, so there. Billy Burtonier, you just made me go back and watch T-Bob's bomb of a statement, dude's a trip. <laughs> uh, Fred shot. I was nervous at thirty four eighteen. Nah, man, you didn't have to be nervous at thirty four eighteen. Um, CFF was mocking Palmer for talking up Daniels. Which oh, college football final? Well, I'd like to see what they said. Um, was Auburn's offense so bad it made our defense look better? Do you legit see improvements in certain areas? So, Brand, I'll tell you the area where LSU has undeniably improved uh, is on the defensive line, and I think it's very, um, I think it's very easy to default and say, "Well, look, it's Pete Jenkins' influence," but I think there's a big part of that 
not just Coach Pete helping them with technique and things of that nature, but also going to a four-man front. Like, it's not a surprise that you're seeing Mason Smith run down plays and be disruptive in the backfield. They've found a home for Harold Perkins. That took a little while, but in that nickel Sam role, they've they found like because he can turn in cover. And I know everyone says, I don't want to see Harold Perkins in coverage. Why not? He can turn and cover. It's just you don't want to see Harold Perkins covering Keon Coleman, but can Harold Perkins cover a back? Can Harold Perkins cover a tight end? Absolutely. And when you get him in space, I mean, y'all, the first, um, it was Auburn's, it was Auburn's second possession. They threw that screen pass and Harold Perkins came from his nickel Sam roll, crashed down, had a two yard TFL because he's that fast in space and can close. I mean, he had a sack, a couple TFLs. It was awesome yesterday, man. Like they found a home for him. I would tell you, I think those are, those are the most noticeable changes that LSU has made. Uh, they're starting to learn their personnel. I think going to the four-man front was has been really significant for this team. Um, Brandon Mall, Bobby, Natalie Lee, what was your bet with Chad Ocho about? Oh, about Derek Carr. He predicted Derek Carr's season-long stats, and um, I said he doesn't get those stats. And So if uh, Derek Carr doesn't hit those stats, Ocho predicted he's got to come to Baton Rouge and host my show with me. Todd Harris, Matt, you nailed it. The O-line was not good last year. Jaden was bailing out because of pressure. This year, he's going through progressions, runs when he absolutely has to. He's looking safeties off, making correct throw on target almost 100% of the time. He's been great, man. Fred Schott, what's up? Uh, Chewy Gutierrez, any plays for today? Yeah, so I gave those out already. I'll say again. So these were... Um, Three from Randy McKay, Colts plus four, Giants uh, plus 14. Their DraftKings actually is at 15 now. And then Giants, Bills, under. Brady Cannon also had the Colts, so hence I'm heavy on the Colts today. Lions minus three and a half, and then a, a Texans Charger, Chargers teaser. Those are the um, <clears throat> those, those are the picks from uh, Jimmy's uh, Sports Betters Paradise podcast. You'll get um, nine more picks today on Jimmy Ott's Football Sunday Two from Andy Isco, two from Paul Nolan, and five from Jimmy. So I always look for agreement when the Sharps are giving out the same game independent of each other. And so Colts or it, Colt, Colts plus four is a game I am heavy on today. Colts plus four. Uh, Jacob Willis, what's up, Brandon Mall? Um, yeah, Todd, Matt, how can you talk on all your shows and your throat not explode? Love all your shows. Thanks, man. I don't know. I'm just talking. Um. I wonder sometimes, Todd, like, okay, when I went to Guns N' Roses a few weeks ago and when Axel is just like three hours of wailing, I'm like, how do you do that every night? That's the thing that I think is, I'm just talking. Um, Brennan Huff, good morning. Uh, Will T. Bob release a statement for his comments about our troops last? Brendan, come on, man. Please, please tell me you're joking. Um, the end of the Colorado State game was ridiculous. Did you watch? Uh, no, I did not. Big Chrisdom 24. Morning Matt Perk is so good. He doesn't miss tackle. Robert Wall, do you think Malik Neighbors is front runner for Blitnikoff? No, uh, I'm guessing Roman Dunze is from Washington. Um, I think... Neighbors is just freaking awesome. And, um, you know, he is actually leading the country in receiving. Malik is leading the country in receiving yards uh, at 860. Luther Burden is second. Roman Dunze from Washington is third at 736. Um, unfortunately, I probably think that because of just the familiarity with a guy like Roman Dunze from Washington and his team being what they are, he would probably be the front runner right now, just out of name recognition. Keep in mind, voters from all over the country vote on these awards. And Roman Dunze in Washington, he's just a more national name than Malik, unfortunately, and probably will continue to be because Washington's in the, it was undefeated, going to be in the playoff mix. Uh, but... Man, if, if Malik 
continues at this pace. Look, here, here's what I'm saying. LSU is going to have their chance for all that stuff when they go to Bama. Uh, when LSU, if LSU, LSU beats Army, they have their open date. LSU is going to go to Tuscaloosa with everything on the line, right? LSU is going to go to Tuscaloosa, understanding if you win and Ole Miss loses to Georgia, which they will, Ole Miss will lose again, um, then you control your destiny in the West. And if LSU goes to Tuscaloosa and Jaden throws for 300 yards and Malik has 150 and a couple of scores, you, that's that's their moment. Yesterday was Washington's moment. It was a top 10 matchup with Washington and Oregon, and Penix played great, and Dunze had the, the great touchdown catch at the end to win it. They had their moment when everybody was watching. Like Keon Coleman had his against LSU in week one. But week one feels like a long time ago now. So LSU's going to have theirs. They're going to have theirs against against Bama, uh, you know, in, in, in three weeks in Tuscaloosa. Um, Take Ranger. More to Matt. Did y'all, did LSU figure out something on defense or resolve that bad? Kind of answered that one. Let's see. Alex Light Giver. Huge night for LSU in terms of recruiting. That's very true. So... I'll run through this really quickly. I know I mentioned it on Whiskey and Wine, but for those that missed it, Shay Dixon tweeted this. Um, most notably, of course, is Bryce Underwood was on campus. Bryce Underwood is the number one, not only the number one quarterback, but the number one player in the country for 2025. Um, here you go. This is who was on campus yesterday. Again, full stadium, beautiful day, sellout crowd, loud, blowout win, all that stuff. Bryce Underwood, the number one quarterback in the country, the number one running back in the country, the number one interior offensive line in the country, the number one linebacker in the country, the number two wide receiver, the number two offensive tackle, and the number two athlete in the country. In all, 15 of the top 150 recruits in America were in Tiger Stadium last night. So, yes, that was significant. All right, please smash that like button. 287 watching live on YouTube, just 86 likes. Let's get those likes up. We appreciate it. Uh, just take a quick second, smash the like button. If you're new, please subscribe up to the channel. Appreciate that. Um, Bo Revere. Saw somebody on Twitter complaining about Neighbors effort. Oh, God. Malik Neighbors is incredible, man. And it's like the crazy thing about Malik is every time you need a catch, like you know they're going to neighbors, like you need a you need third and six, you know you're going to neighbors for seven yards. He's just awesome. Let's see. Brian Thomas did have a really good catch. Brian Thomas had a quiet game. I think he had two catches for seven yards, but one of them was like on a third, was like on a third and three, and he caught a pass for four yards. Um, anyway, I'm not going to search through all that. Uh, read rule. Let's see, Vernell, any kind of whale that you can work their way back into championship contention. Yeah, they went out. Oh, uh, man. You know what? Let's see. I'm going to go to the bottom and come back up because I think I'm, I'm like 30 minutes behind on some of those comments. My apologies. Um, Noah Lejeune, Joe Parker. Do y'all stay at Don Juan every game? Slit. No, so Joe, uh, T-Bob is there for the entire game. I go at halftime. Like, I watch the first half at home, and then I go to Don Juan. I leave my house at halftime, and so I watch the second half there because we start as soon as the game ends. So, no, so we never we never go to Tiger Stadium. We never spend time at the stadium. Um, okay, got you, Brendan. Thank you. Um, Ryan Slate, morning, Matt. Flew home to Baton Rouge for the game. Brought the Maryland weather with me. Pete, Pete, Pete. <laughs> um, oh, that reminds me. So, I met... Uh, yesterday at Don Juan, I met our AFR watch party winner. For those that weren't familiar, our friends at Mockler doing an AFR watch party um, for Thursday Night Football Saints Jags. And uh, Ryan Phillips, I believe, was our is, was his name, was our winner. And uh, Ryan came out last night, so I got to meet him. 
Good dude. Um, hi. Mm -hmm. You want to come sit on Dad's lap? No. <laughs> he said no before he was. He's, oh, hey, Erica. He's wet. Oh, gosh. Hey, you need, can you ask Mommy to go, go oh, God. Can you ask Mommy to go change your diaper? Yeah, I don't. I don't know if it's uh, number one or number two, but his booty's wet. Glad I'm not getting that. Yeah. We didn't get out of we didn't get out of bed till nine, ten, nine fifteen or so. It should be just about done. Um. Let's see. Um, you think if we went out, we could beat Georgia and Atlanta, we would make the college football playoff, or would more dominoes need to fall? Well, I guess I'm I'm making the assumption here that other dominoes will fall. Like if, for example, if you have four undefeated Power Five champions, well, then. That's not going to work out. Like, if Georgia, obviously Georgia. So under this hypothetical, LSU beats Georgia. Let's say Washington's undefeated, Oklahoma's undefeated, Florida State's undefeated, and Michigan's undefeated. Okay, well, if you have those four undefeated conference champions, then you're not getting in. Um, but I don't think that's going to happen. Um, I think all of those teams I just mentioned, except maybe Michigan, are going to lose. Um, because the only game Michigan has to play of any significance or consequence is Ohio State. And I think Michigan's better than Ohio State will win that game. So, <clears throat> I think you are going to get help around college football. And I do think that a, a two-loss LSU, if it wins out wins in Tuscaloosa, and beats Georgia, undefeated Georgia, in the SC Championship game, then yes, I do think LSU will get in. Um, Donovan Peterson, tomorrow's presser. Can you ask Coach about Aaron Anderson returning punts? Um, I'm not sure that I will ask specifically about Anderson, but I don't mind asking about if they've considered making a change there or if they would consider making a change there because of the... I, because, look, the hidden yards they're losing is a real legitimate thing. Like, we went over this on, on Whiskey and Wine. So LSU scored in four plays to open the game, and then Auburn got the ball. They false started, threw a pass for seven yards, threw an incomplete pass, then on third and eight, they burned a timeout. So your crowd was already having an impact. And then they fumbled the snap on their, th their third name. Remember, that was the one where uh, Thorne wasn't ready. The ball scooted way back. And Braden Swinson almost recovered it. So the punter is standing in the end zone. Punter is standing in the end zone. He gets the kickoff. Greg Clayton is standing on the midfield logo. Like, LSU should have half a field here. But he doesn't field the ball. He lets it bounce, and it takes a huge Auburn bounce for 20 yards, and then there's a holding call on top of that. So LSU ends up starting. Kid, The kid kicks out of his end zone, and you end up starting at your own 22. Last week, same thing against Missouri. You, The kid's kicking out of his end zone, and you end up starting at your own 8 because Clayton didn't field the ball. It takes a big Missouri bounce, and then you had a 15-yard penalty on top of it. Like, I, it, it's... And, that, and he did it twice last night, by the way, as well. The Later in the first half, they punted um, from the 34, and they boomed one, which was almost downed inside the five because Clayton didn't fair catch it, but it scooted into the end zone. Point is, man, like, I don't care if you don't return it. You can, like, as soon as the ball leaves foot, you can be waving your hand in the air, like, fair catch, every time. But you got to catch the ball. You can't let the ball bounce and cost your team 30 yards of field position over and over again. Catch the ball. 
You don't even have to be the punt returner. Just be the punt catcher. Anyway. Casey Smith, morning, Matt. Been a long time since so I've asked how about a GMEX update. Doing well, man. We're trugging along still. Um, let me see if I can um, this week. I, I know one of the things we decided was... Um, not to do an AMA, which is not ask me anything for those who don't know, not to do an AMA, um, and instead to, uh, when ready, start putting out pieces of the, the platform, like um, visuals of it. The tricky part with that, Casey, is, and while there are some that we could put out, like, do you want to start disclosing proprietary stuff? You know what I mean? Like when, without being ready to go full bore, right? Um, that's kind of the tricky part, but I'll tell you the, uh, for those that are into crypto, the, you know, the Bitcoin halving is coming up this spring and the halving is what begins, uh, historically the bull run. So, <clears throat> Uh, <clears throat> the fall of 2024, um, I'm looking forward to being, start, starting a lot of fun. Uh, anyway, appreciate everybody's patience. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Matt Lusto, ask you rock did T-Bob ever make that pass? No, he did not. At least not that I know did, did T-Bob ever make that pass? During, during the show last night, T-Bob was saying something like, he was making a joke about swinging and whatnot because you kept talking about his hair. <clears throat> she went, oh. You mean you wouldn't, uh, wouldn't want to swing with T-Bob? Oh, but you would with T-Bob with somebody. But if you were, it would be with T-Bob. That didn't sound very convincing. That didn't sound very convincing. Uh, Barry Jocelyn, back at home in DeRitter for my dad's funeral. Sorry for your loss, Barry. Uh, so the great LSU game and whiskey and wine last night served as a bit of happiness during a heavy weekend. Great to get the W, but dad was a huge LSU fan. Barry, our, my condolences, man. All of our condolences to you and your family. Um, glad we were able to provide a little bit of a respite for you, man. But uh, sincere condolences to you and your family. Uh, know a lot of people from DeRitter too, actually. Um, <clears throat> um, no, Dane came in from DeRitter. Well, he didn't come in yesterday, but we see Dane come come in from DeRitter. Um, my buddy Stevie Levy, King of the Wing, Pluckers owners from, from DeRitter. Johnny Jones from DeRitter. Shout out to uh, Southwest Louisiana. Mac 34... You can't take anything from the DBs in that game, just like the Miss State game, because passing game, too terrible. HP looks a lot better, though. Mm. Uh, sure you can, Mac. Um, because Arkansas doesn't have good receivers, and they torched you. So, yeah. You can't. All right, Ole Miss doesn't have good receivers. They torched you. So, yeah, you can, actually. You still have to turn and run. You still got to get your head around. You still got to defend. And you didn't have receivers just freely running wide open in your secondary. So, yes, you actually can take something from last night. You take a lot of things from last night. Leon Williams, good morning. Great win. Maybe it's clicking. A lot of football left. Uh, Gregory Gordy, great whiskey and wine last night. Thanks, man. Greg T. Uh, let's see... Georgetown 65, Matt, lifelong LSU fan, but played college football at Georgetown. Uh, Hoyas moved to 2 0 in the Patriot League. Would really appreciate a shout out to the Hoya football team. There you go. Shout out Hoyas. I remember um, when I was coming out of high school, uh, Georgetown, Villanova, uh, some of those D3 schools, a little bit of interest. The problem is there's no scholarship, so you have to pay to go there. So, um, needless to say, that didn't go very far. 
Um, Thomas Devlin as a Michigan fan, watching that Washington Oregon game yesterday shows the Ohio State Michigan game may not be as big a deal in the future because those teams are legit. Bob Poole, any thoughts on how well Lance Hurd stepped up to replace Emory Jones? Yeah, I mean, um, if you're not getting noticed, that's a good thing. Now, Lance Hurd did have a false start. <clears throat> um, and they did highlight a play. on that third nine from the 12, where uh, pre pressure came from outside of her. Um, but, um, but, and then, oh, and then the next, hang on. It was in the third quarter. The next time LSU had a goal to go, wherever, there it is. It was LSU's first possession of the second half. So this is where Caleb Jackson had the 60-yard kickoff return. Um, you have a third and seven from the 25. Daniels had been sacked. You got third and seven from the 25. And this is where Kyron Lacey, they threw the touchdown pass to Kyron Lacey. If you go back and watch the play, Diggs had been the running back on that drive. Diggs had one, two, had three carries on that drive. So it was Diggs' drive. They put Josh Williams in on third and seven to the right of Jaden. And Williams was there to give Lance Hurt help on the right side. And they did loop a rusher around Hurd and Williams step up and stonewalled him. And that left Jaden clean to go throw the touchdown pass to Kyron Lee. So go back and watch that play. Just, just watch Josh Williams. Um, I guess my point is they gave him help probably where they felt like they needed. Oh, really? Come see. Come see. Come see. Come see. Oh, I love it. Check out this shirt. What does your shirt say? Go Cubs. Kelly, hi! You do it. <laughs> you do it. Go Cubs! <laughs> <laughs> okay, now you can go watch videos. I gotta go get him. Look at those pants, they're so short. Like when he sits, they go to his knees. All right, I'm gonna go to Target in a little bit. Well, they're like six, seven pants. He's nine, so they're size six, seven. And he's he's nine. short. Why right, is he so tall? He's not tall. He's just long because he's skinny. And he's old. I know, people he don't realize he's like not. He acts like a four-year-old. Yeah, yeah. He's nine. So it's yeah. like, I was like, he's so tall. I'm like, no, he just acts mm -hmm. like he's four. Yeah. Like, look at a four-year-old walking around. Or three-year-old, maybe. Even yeah. Like um, but I said, I'm going to go to Target after I've uh, okay. I got to do some little... Did he have food? Cool bit. No, it was just pee. Oh, okay. It was good. nighttime by phone, so... Wow. But he probably, my mom and dad probably bathed him like a nine like, well, earlier last night. No worries, I'm just doing a show. Oh. <laughs> we can just have a condo. A lot of people were so, Danae said whenever we walked in last night, so I was like, oh my God, there she is. <laughs> <laughs> Danae was, like, was so famous. I'm like, I am not famous. She's like, yeah, whenever we walked past, I was like, oh, that's her, there she is. That's Matt's wife. That, that's her. <laughs> and I was like, it's because I like, don't ever exist, because I'm never around. I was like, I never go out. I'm always true. Like, I always have to, I'm like, that's why I love you, because you, you do things like to bring me out and go do stuff while Matt's working. You know, anyway, it's just fun, because she was like, there she is. Oh my god. Oh, no, it's a, it was just my dad. Um, did you see the picture of the Tulane, Tulane Air relieving himself in the quarter at Memphis? I did, yeah. Got when you gotta go, you gotta go. Um, Garrison Grant, so happy with Jaden this year. Fearful how the offense will look next year. Thoughts? Um, well, I look, Jaden's great. So I think it's natural to think you'll have a step back because you're not going to have someone who's a five year starter. Um, I think Garrett Nussmeyer has all the ability in the world to be a great quarterback. I think mean, he's mature. We've talked about that a bunch. Um, and if you want a real giant reason for optimism, um, Mike Denbrock's a great offensive play caller. 
I mean, he's a great OC, great play caller, and Joe Sloan has proven to be a really good quarterbacks coach. So I think you have a lot of, of positive things going for you to say you're going to continue being really good offensively. Now, you may not have a guy that's a Heisman candidate. Or maybe you will. But, um, but yeah. No, Lejeune, nice to see Josh get a couple of tutties. Yeah, for sure. Nice to see Josh Williams get in the end zone a couple times tonight. He is ex we talked about him last night on Whiskey and Wine. He is uh, you know, a guy that was your RB1 a year ago who has accepted a lesser role with Noah uh, Dix, uh, Noah Dix, with uh, Logan Dix, I think Noah can Noah Dix, with Logan Dix coming in, but has still accepted his role. Sometimes he's a blocking back. Um, sometimes he gets a carry or two, but when, I think I think Josh Williams is leading LSU in yards per carry, and I don't, actually don't even think it's particularly close. I think he's averaging like seven, eight yards a carry. Um, uh, let's see. Josh Williams is averaging eight and a half yards a carry. So when he's gotten his opportunities, he's got 19 carries for 161. Just 19 carries. The guy was your leading rusher a year ago. Diggs has 99 rushes for 585. Daniels, 86 rushes for 515. And then Josh Williams, 19 for 161. By, by comparison, Williams, 19 for 161. We're all infatuated with Caleb Jackson, who's great. He's got 18 carries for 93 yards, averaging 5.2. To put perspective on how good Josh Williams has been when he's gotten his opportunities. Steady player, man. Just hadn't gotten the touches, but he's been great when he's been called upon. <laughs> Could LSU talk to Kobe Matthews into transferring back with the needed safety next year? Um, maybe. Look, Jacoby Matthews went to A and M, and it was a hundred percent a money thing. I talked about that whenever he signed because, um. I mean, I was told the terms of how his whole thing was structured. It was a, I'm trying to remember off the top of my head, it was like a four year, it was 125 a semester, or 125 a year with uh, payments made per semester. So you, know, you had to stay four years to get the entire thing or whatever. So anyway, it was just a guy desperately, desperately wanted to go to LSU, but had family pressure to go where he was going to be able to make the most amount of money. Um, and I can't fault him, man. Um, so I don't know. It feels like that would be a money thing. I mean, I've, I even know there were people that talked to, to that family about it, but you got to consider things like hidden costs and opportunity costs. Like for example, yes, a and M's offering more money, but if to like for his parents, like if you want to go watch a play, think about what you have to spend in gas and hotel driving to college station eight times, seven, eight times a year to gas and food and lodging and all that stuff to stay there when you go, as opposed to if it's just 30 minutes or 45 minutes from your house in Ponchatoula. So anyway, they're, they, they tried, man, they tried really hard, but that was just, that was a, it was a binary decision. He was going where he got the most money. That was A&M. So, uh, Daniel Roof, early look at LSU Bama. Um, I don't think anybody's stopping LSU's offense. I mean, I'll, I was on WJOX in Birmingham this week, and they were kind of asking me about that, and I, you know, about the LSU offense. I was like, they're going to score on everybody. Like, they're going to score thirty on everybody they play. Like, what about when in Tuscaloosa? I was like, and I started to say they're they're going to score thirty against Bama, and. They were like a re, you know, they're reacting, and so one of the the hosts was like, "Wait, hang on, hang on, we want, we want the clean cut, we want the clean cut," because they were going to clip it, you know, and post it out there. And I was like, "I'll do it, y'all, fine." LSU is going to go to Tuscaloosa. They're going to score thirty in that game because they're going to score thirty on everybody. Um, so it's just a matter of can the defense keep getting better and better. Hopefully, they can. Trivia Carter, good morning. Lars Corville, Phil Steele did well. Uh, Phil was 6-3-1 yesterday. And I mentioned, like, I did not play the A&M. &M. He gave A&M. I did not play that because I like Tennessee. So I just kept saying, whoops. So I was 6-2-1 yesterday. But, again, for those just joining, if you're looking for plays, uh, Jimmy Ott's Football Sunday is on right now. Starting about 11-15, 11-20 is when the picks start coming. But I'll tell you, I went and watched Jimmy's podcast this week. And so three picks from Randy McKay, for those who are interested. And Randy is widely considered 
the best, if not one of the best sports handicappers. Oh, Randy McKay has the Colts plus four, the Giants plus 14, but I think it's up to 15 now at DraftKings. The under in the Giants' bills. Then Brady Cannon, um, who was like the Westgate, he won the Westgate sports handicapper competition, so he's really good too. He also has Colts plus four, so I'm heavy on the Colts today. Colts plus four, Lions minus three and a half, and then a Texans Chargers teaser. Um, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Let's see. Casey Smith isn't Hurd's name Zalance. Why does everyone keep calling him Lance? Because he goes by Lance. Um, it's like my name is Matthew, but people call me Matt. Uh, Tate Granger, the joys of parenting. Bob Poole, Joe Parker, <laughs> classic dad play. Devin Kelly, you rock on diaper duty. Uh, Bob Florich, hey man, I'm doing a show. Uh, Michigan has to go to Happy Valley. Uh, David Woodard, if our D continues to show improvement, I don't think Bama can beat us in Tuscaloosa with our high-powered offense. H-Town Creole, what's up? Bronze, the God. I don't know, Matt Penn State is definitely a potential chaos agent. Okay. Okay. Um... Uh, H-Town Creole, they have to start returning kicks on special teams. So, I kind of disagree. Um, the, and here's why in 2019, I remember the Auburn game in 2019, Stingley fumbled a punt. If you remember, he muffed a punt. It was weird. He kind of like bent awkwardly on the sideline. looked like he might've hurt his knee. Thank God he did. But anyway, um, Ooh, Rex, Randy, Teddy, all picking the saints. What about Sam? Who's Sam picking? Sam picked the Texans. Um, I'm watching. That's countdown. Sunday night countdown. Or Sunday NFL. Sunday NFL countdown. Sam Ponder picked the Texans. The other three all picked the Saints. Um, okay. No, so anyway, so H-Town Creole, 2019. They knew their offense was so good, there was no sense in, um, risking any type of turnover. So, it was just like, fair catch the punts, take a touchback on kickoffs. We'll just start at the 25 and go 75 yards. And I kind of feel the same about this team. I think Caleb Jackson has certainly proven able, um... But you also keep getting penalized. So I'm more along the lines of, to, of saying just make sure that you don't end up in a situation where you turn the ball over or cause yourself a penalty or injury or anything like that. <laughs> Bill Freyer said we need a true special teams coach, not a coach who can. See, Bill, I, I disagree with Bob Diaco. Like, Bob Diaco is a special teams coach. Bob Diaco has been a special teams coach. So that's what happened when Jimmy Lindsay became sick and Lindsay um, took his leave. Uh, John Jancic moved inside to defensive line and Bob Diaco started coaching the Jack linebackers and also the special teams. But Bob Diaco, like, just as a for instance, um, Bob Diaco, here's Bob Diaco's bio. I... Uh, there's not a test. You don't need to remember this, but just as a for instance. So he started his career in 96 as a GA at Iowa. His first full-time job was in 99 at Western Illinois. Running back, special teams. Eastern Michigan, running back, special teams. Eastern Michigan, linebacker, special teams. Eastern Michigan, outside linebacker, special teams. Western Michigan, linebacker, special teams. Central Michigan, where he's co-DC, linebackers coach. Then Virginia, linebacker, special teams. And then he started becoming a DC. So from 99 to 04, up to 08, 99 to 08, he was a special teams coordinator everywhere he went. I mean, he's 
more than capable. Like Bob Diaco is more than capable of being a special teams coordinator. Devin definitely need to let Anderson have a chance to return every punt against Army to get as many reps as possible. I agree. I agree. You gotta you have to make that change. I know Anderson muffed one against Florida State, and so he lost the job, but I agree. H-Town Creole Scone, if LSU wins out, including the SC Championship game, does Jaden win the Heisman Trophy? Not if Michael Penix is undefeated and leading the country in passing. Noah June, we are beating Bama. Hope so. Shannon Mack, Saints have just benched Trevor Penning for James Hurst. If Pete can't go, Max Garcia will start at left guard. So did they announce that? I know Underhill was um, Underhill was uh, floating that earlier this week. And if he was floating it, then clearly he got that from someone there with the organization. Um, I don't see it. I'm not saying you're wrong. Okay, there it is. Jeff Duncan has it. Okay. Hurst expected to play, replace Trevor Penning at left tackle against the Texans. Good move. All right, y'all please smash that like button, 256 watching, 129 likes. Appreciate y'all for being there. Uh, Facebook, please like the Matt Moscone page of the post. Uh, Dalton Barnett, American Patriot, good morning. Chris Williams, is there any quarterback out there next year we can grab out of the portal just in case Nuss doesn't pan out? Well, not yet. I mean, you'll have to wait till the portal window opens, but I will... Y'all, I am totally fine if LSU goes and takes a quarterback out of the portal. Look at it this way. Do you want to go in next season with Nussmeyer, who's a veteran guy but hasn't played a ton, Ricky Collins, who basically will be a redshirt freshman, and Colin Hurley, a true freshman, that being your whole quarterback room? I mean, it's essentially the same situation that you were in before last year where you had Miles Brennan, who's a veteran guy, who's a fan favorite, very popular, but hadn't played a bunch. And then you had Nuss, who was a redshirt freshman, and true freshman Walker Howard. You went and got Jaden Daniels, who was a three-year starter at Arizona State, and he won the job. So I think, yes, if you have the opportunity to add experience at the most important position in team sports, you do it. It's not to say you're definitively bringing in someone to start over Garrett Nussmeyer, but if you have so, have an opportunity to bring in someone with experience who can push and challenge for the job, then yes, you do it. Nothing should be given. Like you should always be trying to look to improve your roster at every position, especially the most important position. <laughs> Uh, let's see, uh, Lando Calrisk C N. Lacey stepped up so big. We need this game. Play against Auburn to transfer to the Bama game. We'll win. Robert Ponturieri, good morning from Sacramento. Go Tigers. Co-workers keep telling me Bo Nix is better than Jade Daniels. It's laughable. Bo Nix is playing very well. He is not better than Jade Daniels. Uh, let's see... Donovan Peterson. What's up, Donovan? Uh, ask e rock um, uh, If she comes back, we can try it. Did Bobby ever keep a GD countdown on T-Bob last night? I don't know. So apparently Bobby does not like when T-Bob says GD. He's like, you can say anything else, but you can't say GD. Uh, David Woodard. Was it just media talking what ifs? Or... Or was there some word out of the coaching staff at tying Kyron Lacey at trying Kyron Lacey at DB? Um, 
Yeah, David, I'd never heard anything like that. I don't. I never even heard media talking about that. I literally heard no mention of Kyron Lacey going to DB whatsoever. And I like to think I'm pretty plugged in into what's going on, but I didn't hear anything about that. Um, let's see. Uh, SRT 86.4. Yeah, your prediction was way off, Matt. It was. I had 34-30. So I was very, very glad to see LSU's defense play exceptionally well. It was, uh, I believe, very hard to justify predicting the defense play well, however. So I didn't. Um, but there's a lot to like about how I think your defensive line has played the past couple weeks. And um, you get another game against what's going to be an out manned opponent in Army. So go play well another another Saturday. Keep progressing and take two weeks to get ready to play Alabama. Go play your best game of the year. Devin, what happened to Noah Kane? Can't wait to see 28 be the bell cow next year. Kind of reminds me of Cecil the Diesel. Uh, I mean, nothing happened to Noah Kane. He just, he played last night. He's just down the depth chart, man. You got some really talented guys in that room. Um, Perk made some money last night. His stock's through the roof. Well, he's also just a sophomore, so he's not draft eligible. So get another year of him. Um, Noah June at 17. No, the game was over. Um, I don't know. Though I said it earlier, I'll repeat it. The only time in the game where I was a little like, eh, is because you had two possessions in the red zone where you came away with short field goals where you didn't finish drives. So you're at half and it's 20 to seven and it probably should have been um, 28 to seven. You, know, you should have been, you should have been blowing that team out at half instead of it's 20 to seven and they're getting the ball to start the second half and you're just a, a scoop and score, a pick six, you know, a punt return, you're a busted coverage, you're one play away from being in a game, right? So, uh, but, you know, you held them, um, you know, you held them to a, um, you held them to a field goal to start the second half, and it was 20 to 10, and then you scored to make it 27 10 at that point, it was over. So, um, All right, might be just about done here. Yeah, t 29 nothing Colorado at half was nothing for sure. I did have Stanford plus 12 and a half in that game, so that was fun. Okay, um, all right, y'all. Let's see, might be just about done. <laughs> Someone noticed this too. Clayton Knight, uh, looks like a bottle of Weller went down. I see a gap. So I have my Weller 12. So I do have another bottle, but it's the one and a half. So it doesn't fit up there. So I need to get another fifth of Weller 12. That'll fit right there. But yes, that was the Weller 12. That's the gap. Up there for those that can't see it. Well, I guess you probably can't see it on YouTube, but Facebook can. Uh, Tony Williams, over the last 10 years, our best quarterbacks have been transfers. That's true. So you never... Uh, I think you should never look away from that as a possibility. You're always looking to make your team better if you can. I mean, look at running back. You had Josh Williams. You had Noah Kane. You had Caleb Williams coming in. You had plenty of running backs. And you went and got Logan Diggs. Why? Because he's better than all the guys you had. You made your team better. Uh, Kerry Hughes feels like the Heisman could come down to Penix and Daniels. Could. Could, for sure. J.J. Um, McCarthy right now is the second best odds, by the way, from Michigan. But I don't know that I see that happen. Okay, all right, we're done. Y'all have a great day. As always, shout out to Brock, the Baton Rouge Orthopedic Clinic, Hudco Roofing, HudcoRoofing.com. Need an orthopedist? Remember, Brock, uh, after hours clinic is open nights and weekends. Bypass the ER, go see our friends at Brock. And of course, if you need a roof, give us a shout at Hudco Roofing. Do business with someone you know. Love to give you that free, no obligation roofing inspection at Hudco Roofing, HudcoRoofing.com. All right, thanks for watching. Y'all have an awesome day. Who dat? Peace.